So my friends, I've been back out on my 6am canal walks, so I just wanted to say these opening clips aren't super edited, but it is a realistic look at conditions out on the canal. As you can see down here at the Trevor Basin, soon after 6am, it is an incredibly chilly time to be out and about. Now, I'm going to try and keep this brief because my hand that is holding the phone as I film is extremely cold, as you can probably imagine. But, make no mistake, it's about minus two degrees here at the moment. And even though it's already gone 6 a.m., the weather forecast is actually saying it's going to get colder for the next couple of hours. Now, I know that this year with the various energy prices and so on, the fact that we've got this really cold snap of weather in early December with months of winter ahead of us could well be a big issue for a lot of people whether you're in a house or on a boat and even though I've said in the past about how warm it can be on a boat compared to people's expectations because of heat in such a small area when you consider that compared to say the winter before last, coal is now costing almost three times what myself and many other people, again, whether you're on a boat or in a house, we're paying. I'm not, I'm not thinking it's looking too clever if we've got this sort of cold weather already. And as I say, potentially a lot of very chilly weather to come in between now and the end of winter. In that there's probably some people who have woken up today and realised they didn't quite stack enough uh, fuel in the fire for the night and that it's going to have two effects. Firstly, it's going to be a very cold awakening, but also it's going to be the first sign of just how expensive this winter could be. If you're paying somewhere in the region, maybe around £8 per 10 kilograms of fuel, even heating a tiny boat at those prices, things can quickly rack up in these sort of weather conditions. Oh, look at that, we've actually got a car typically, one of the only vehicles about at this hour. Now, before I end this clip, because my fingers are once again absolutely freezing, just want to show you this little old style that I've always loved. Just a little break in the wall there, and you can see how unevenly worn away that is. I assume that would have had some sort of shape originally, but yeah, just some of those lovely sort of very rustic old features. Right, seriously, I need to put my hands back in my pockets and warm up here. So my friends, out here on the punks of the aqueduct, exposed in the middle of the valley, I've got to say that with a tiny bit of breeze in the air, if I thought I was cold before, now I really am cold. Right, I'm just going to Pan the camera around and turn the torch off because if we look across to the horizon there you can see the very faintest little glow of orange at the really earliest earliest moment of dawn here saying that the sun isn't too far away but given how clear that sky is it may be no surprise that it could well be getting cooler for the next couple of hours still. In a recent video I spoke about not being fooled by beautiful stereotypical canal winter scenes like these and it's typical of course that within a few days we had the first real cold weather where I could have used today's clips as a good example of just how chilly it can get out there but I just wanted to show these couple of photos of my bike from the back of my old boat a few years back and I just cannot believe there was a time that I would wake up early in the morning and then hop on my bike that was literally frozen over and then pedal into work and as much as there are these absolutely beautiful moments it's those practical realities of the varying seasons out on the boat in the rural place and as you can imagine sometimes waking up and cycling in those conditions no matter how thick your gloves were, I was arriving at work with my hands absolutely numb and they simply would never fully revive throughout the entire course of the day. 
And there's certainly moments like that that I look back on and I think, hmm, perhaps I didn't make my life the easiest. But then you look at some of these summary clips here and you think, wow, could things ever be any better? I would never want to be anywhere else. Just for curiosity's sake here, this is the Graham Palmer Lock on the Montgomery Canal. And as you can see, it is a very minor level change for the water. Just, uh, just down from a little sort of basin area from a now defunct branch line, which is why it just has a very minor little uh, drop in the level there. Anyway, more on that sort of stuff in the future. So yeah, we can look at this summary uh, footage and we can think, yes, this is more like it. This is how I envision boat life. And if somebody was out there looking to buy a boat and bought a boat in these conditions and then got to experience these fantastic summer's days for maybe a month or two before the season started to change, you could have a rude awakening when you had your first proper cold nights. And it's another important thing, like I say, that it's not just about looking at these things in a case-by-case -case basis and going, oh yeah, well, I can handle the winter if it means I get to be out here in the summer. Because just like the winters aren't guaranteed to be magical, snowy, mythical conditions, the summers aren't guaranteed to be beautiful, sunny, warm times of year without a fair share of rain mingled in. As the temperature is plummeting around these parts for the winter, my friends, there's two things I'm constantly telling everybody they should have, whether you're on a boat or in a house or wherever. That is a proper balaclava, especially for me with my big beak to cover up, and something I'll never stop talking about in my videos, a really, really good torch. This was actually life-changing, I swear, down these unbelievably dark towpaths and even just walking around in these winter days with it being so dark so much of the time, it's just fantastic to have this unbelievably bright light. Sorry about the random nature of that clip, my friends. Uh, I just wanted to break up the narration, and that's a clip I recorded a few days ago that simply just doesn't gel or fit in with any of my other recent footage. So, um, yeah, there's some tips for you. Enjoy! Um, I want to just finish with a slight side note here and just say that there'll probably be some people from overseas who are looking at me talking about temperatures like minus two and maybe minus four, minus five in other videos from the past. And they might be thinking, flipping heck, is that it? I wish it was that warm here sometimes. And it's important to remember that over here, our boats and houses and infrastructure just aren't set up to have extreme cold temperatures. So temperatures like these are what we consider cold and certainly a shock to the system. But I'm not saying that I might not need to toughen up and uh, get over it to a certain extent. But as I say, I just wanted to put these clips out here just to show people the reality of, yes, it can look beautiful in the snow and the frost and all the rest of it, but of course, you've got the general practicalities of everyday life with these varying seasons and weather conditions to consider. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up quick. Please do check out my books about boat life, Kindle and paperback, links in the description. Follow me on Facebook and all the rest of that sort of stuff. And well, have an absolutely fantastic time, my friends. I hope to see you around very soon. Loads more videos coming very, very soon. See ya!